Welcome to Electro Online. The next topic we want to discuss is called the complex power and they're all related to one another. So let's find out how and what the meaning of complex power is. Notice we have the little number one up there which implies there's going to be a little number two, a little number three because we're going to take a look at the concept of complex power in various ways. Here's our first way. We can say that the magnitude of the complex power is the apparent power. So we haven't really explained yet what complex power is, but we know whatever it is, if we take the magnitude of that, it is the same as the apparent power. So therefore, we can say that the magnitude of complex power, and notice we have a bold phase S that implies it's a vector-like quantity, in other words, a phasor. We take the amplitude of the phasor, we get what we call the apparent power, which is equal to the product of the RMS voltage and the RMS current times the cosine of the phase angle between them. And of course, the cosine of the phase angle between them is the power factor. So, the absolute value or the magnitude of the complex power is equal to the apparent power, which is VRMS times RMS times the cosine of the phase angle, or one half the maximum voltage times the maximum current times the cosine of the difference of the phase angles of the voltage and the current. So how do we define complex power? Well, we can define it by saying that it's the phasor format of the apparent power. And that's a good way to describe it. Now, let's take a look at what that looks like in phasor format. So we're all familiar with the phasor format with the impedance, the resistance and reactance, and the phase angle phi which then implies whether or not the current is leading or the, the voltage is leading or the current is leading. Take a look at the next diagram. Notice we have a similar diagram. We have the same phase angle, but here we have the power dissipated by the resistor. Therefore, it's the real power consumed in the circuit. On the vertical side here, we have what we call the reactive power, the power associated with the reactive element, such as the inductor or the capacitor. Those don't actually consume power, they temporarily store it and give it back to the circuit. So Q represents the power that's absorbed and give back, absorbed and given back, absorbed and given back by the inductor and the capacitor. And then you can see along the diagonal line, the hypotenuse here, this represents the phasor that represents the complex power. So we can see that, that the magnitude of the complex power then is equal to the square root of the real power squared plus the reactive power squared, just like the impedance is equal to the square root of the resistance squared plus the reactance squared. See the complete similarity and relationship between those two diagrams and those two concepts. So we have a real power consumed by the resistor. We have the reactive power, which is absorbed and given back by the reactive elements, such as the inductor and the capacitor. And then we have the complex power, which is the phasor summation of P and Q. So it's basically the vector sum of the real power and the reactive power is represented by what we call the complex power. And that's a good start in trying to understand what we mean by complex power.